Hello, this is Darren Pearson from darrenscorner.com and we'll be looking now at part six in our video tutorial series of how to create a web-based trivia game using Tumult Hype and JavaScript. So to start with, again, go to darrenscorner.com, go to the tutorial section, and go down to part six. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a JavaScript function called answer clicked uh, and activate it every time that we click on answer A, B, C, D, or E. So go to here and click on instructional files and we should see part 6.zip. Now I've downloaded that already uh, and put it on my desktop. Here it is, we can see it has the background file, the trivia info file, the part 6 start.hype file, and then we have two text files here, part 6 actions, .txt and part six functions. So if we open these up and take a look at them, we can see in part six actions, uh, we're first going to go into initialize splash and change that. Uh, basically nothing big, we're just going to take the alerts out. And we'll do the same thing in initialize main. I always like to do the alerts when I'm troubleshooting, but then once I know everything's working the way I expect it to, uh, we'll do that. Then we're going to create a, a new function called answer clicked and we'll show how that works. Now part six function these are the parts that we're going to be copying and pasting in. So this is initialize splash and this is initialize main right there and we've added a couple things in initialize main. So here we just took out the alerts. Here we took out the alerts there were a couple of alerts right there um, but we can see then we added in this window temp and we'll talk a little bit about what that is and then down here is our answer clicked. So let's walk through this. Oops, one second. Part six actions. You go to the initialize splash, delete the lines, copy lines seven and eight. Okay, that should be easy. One second here. There we go. So here's where what we are function should look like uh, at the end of part five. Here's initialize splash. Um, you can either do this one of two ways. You can delete everything out and copy this in, or if you just want to delete these two lines, that's effectively what we're doing here. So I'll do it the, the way I described it in here. I delete that out, uh, go over to my functions, copy lines just seven and eight, copy, go over here, paste, there we go functions updated, and initialize main. I'm going to get rid of this. Go back into here and copy, starting at line, I think, 20, and going down, oops, a second, line 20 down to, I don't know, 47 or so. Copy, go in here, paste. So let's look at the, the changes that we made. Like we said, we took the alerts out. This, I create a temporary array, window temp1, uh, with A, B, C, D, E in there. And then I have a bunch of if-else statements that basically will take out if the whatever the correct answer is for this slide. If it's A, I'm going to do a splice function from 0 to 1. If it's B, I do splice from um, position 1 for one element position 2, position 3, position 4. Uh, and then I'll echo back what the correct answer is window.correctAnswer, window.currentSlide. The wrong answers are window.temp1. And so the wrong answers I want to get rid of uh, in the next step. So that makes sense. Uh, let's go here in the main scene, select answer A display, and run a JavaScript called answer clicked. So let's get that set up. I go back here. I'm in main. I select answer A right there. And I'm going to say uh, action on mouse click run JavaScript. And I want to create a new function. Again, it calls it untitled function. I'm just going to rename that answer clicked. Because that's what happens when we click on answer A. We're going to run this function and copy lines 59 through 77. So, there, 59 through 77. Copy, paste. There we go. 
So let's take a look at this. Let me just do a file save. Let's take a look at what's going on inside here. If I click on answer A, I have this big if statement. It starts here. There's the opening curly brace, and this is the closing curly brace. And I only do anything if window.answer clicked is equal to equal false. So again, if you remember up in initialize, right there, I said every time the page loads, I said answer clicked equal to false. If it's false, set it equal to true. This will prevent us from clicking on multiple answers. Now, some trivia games allow you to do this and change your answer and things like that. I'm not going to do it here, but I'll talk about it in the summary if we want to change how the game works. And then what I do is, at the time that it's clicked, I create a variable called score value, and I say set that equal to countdown HTML. So again, if they click right away, it's going to be 1,000. Um, if it's you know halfway through it, it'll be 500, something like that. Um, and I have to run this whole thing through a command called parse int. This will make sure that this converts it from a string character to an integer. Um, this is variable types. If it's an integer, we can add it, subtract it, multiply it, divide it, do all kinds of math functions. If it's a string, we can't do that. Then I create a global window.clicked answer equals element.id.char at six. Um, you can kind of go to W3Schools or something to kind of take a look at how the char at functions. Basically, this is going to tell me you just clicked A, B, C, D, or E um, in each one of those. So it's an window to an answer clicked is going to be A, B, C, D, or E. And I do two alerts. You just clicked element ID uh, when the score was score value. Check if window dot answer clicked is correct. And then I have another if statement here, and I say if window.clicked answer equals window.correct answer, bracket window.current slide, then I do an alert, you got the correct answer, and I say the new value of the current score is the old value of the current score plus score value, that's the time they clicked in, else, wrong answer, and then window.current score, the new value is the old value minus the score value. I might change this later on just to not change it at all. Uh, this way they could get a negative score, technically. Uh, and then I say alert, the new score value is this. So let's test out if that's true. Oops, I forgot these things. Uh, we put that function on A, we haven't put it on B, C, D, or E yet, so let's do that. So I'll say answer B, and I'll say action, on mouse click, run JavaScript, and this time I can say answer clicked from the pull down menu. Here's C, run JavaScript, answer clicked. Here's answer D, run JavaScript, answer clicked. And here's E, run JavaScript, answer clicked. Do a file save, and then I need to test out. Uh, save it, preview it, and verify the following. The correct answer and the wrong answer displayed in alerts. Clicking William Henry Harrison shows the correct answer message and displays a positive one for score. Clicking any other answer shows the wrong message and displays a negative one. Any clicks after the first are ignored. Okay, so let's preview. Okay, the correct answer is D. The wrong answers are A, B, C, and E. And first president, let me click on William Henry Harrison. You just clicked answer D display when the score was 200. Check if D is the correct one. Hey, it is, yay. The new score is now 200, because that's when I clicked in at 200, okay. Uh, we haven't changed it yet, we'll do that in the next step, but we know those global variables. Let me hit refresh, and again, these alerts are helpful in troubleshooting, but they can also be a little annoying. I'll hit start, and I'll go through the alerts pretty fast. Start, okay, okay, there we go. And I'll click him right there. You just clicked answer D display when the score was 800. Check if D is correct, yes it is. The new score value is 800, woohoo! So you can see those alerts when we're clicking on them, this is still timelines running in the background. Let's do this again, and I'll click a wrong answer kind of quickly. I'll click Zachary Taylor there. You just clicked answer A display when the score was 1,000. Check if A is correct. 
Wrong answer. The new score is minus 1,000. I think I might change that later on just to be zero if you click the wrong thing. But you can see that it's done. And also now if I try to click on the right answer, it ignores that because that window.answer clicked is went from false to true. So, you see, yep, I checked all those things and they work. So, that is it for part six. On to part seven.